the, the whole idea is to be persistent. If you really want to do something, you just keep going at it, keep going at it, and you make mistake after mistake after mistake. Pretty soon, you finally get it. And then, then it becomes a joy think, because now you can make something pretty darn nice, you know. I don't think you ever make anything perfect. But uh, so that's how I kind of got started in doing it. And, and then uh, we played in, in surf bands. Dick Dale was one of my heroes. Mm -hmm. And I didn't meet Dick Dale for years later, but we used to go to the Rendezvous vault, Ballroom and see Dick uh, Dale play. And uh, he was playing a Fender Strat you know, upside down, backwards, strong, and a Fender um, Showman amp with one, I didn't know at the time, that big shiny four-inch cone, I didn't know that was a JBL, and the next time we saw him, he had two of those, and whoa, mm -hmm. but he was kind of like the, I think Dick Dale was kind of like the king of heavy, or the beginning of heavy metal, he was the original heavy metal guy, he played really loud, and, and just, just an amazing guy, really nice guy, I've since, you know, talked to him several times, and and he's got a son that's Jimmy Dale who's playing guitar yeah. now. But so Very there you go. There you, you go. Know, when I see, when I look at your uh, the neck that's in the museum down there, mm -hmm. I don't really see it the same way you do. I, I see yeah. it as wow. For a young kid, you certainly have yeah. a lot of ideas that yeah. were original yeah. because necks weren't being made like that. No, no. Thank God, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, I don't know. It's, and then, then I worked. I um, after I got married, I quit playing in bands. And um, a couple of my good friends at Fender knew that I was painting guitars, so Fender hired me to do all the out of warranty repairs because they didn't want to take guys off the line when a guitar came in scratched up and take them off and stop production to to refinish and sand them down. So I got all that. So I started um, uh, painting and refretting necks and painting, uh, you know, refinishing necks. And then they found out I could cover amplifiers, so I started covering those Fender Rhodes pianos that came in all scratched up. So it was great for me, I was swamped. And I'd go down to Fender at least twice a week, and then Steve Bollinger, who passed on, um, real good friend of mine, he worked there for a long time, and then uh, he worked for Jackson for a while, and he went back to Fender. He went in the custom shop. Really, a, a brilliant guy. Um, he would he love it when I come over because it gave him a, an excuse kind of to goof off for a little bit, and he would take me over to the main plant, and I'd get to meet everybody, Babe Simone and all those guys, and watch them make Fender guitars and learn how they painted them. They were using I was using a lacquer, nitrocellulose lacquer. They were using Easy Buff polyester from Dan Edwards. And uh, so I learned a lot just by watching them. They used overhead pin routers. Everything was made, you know, by hand. It was they didn't have CNC machines in those days, and um, it was just just great to see all those guitars. And it was just so exciting, you know, so motivating. And then I I thought, you know, these these Fender guitars are cool, but I bet they'd really you know look great in exotic woods. So I so I started getting some exotic wood, and then I my junior high school buddy Lynn Ellsworth taught him how to make guitars he opened a company called Boogie Bodies in Washington did up all the, did the tooling up and made a few guitars and then we had um, um, the guy from um, his name was Boffin I believe from uh, Deep Purple came by one day and Fender was sending me all these rock and roll stars so we started build. I started building wild guitars. Alan Rogan, that that worked for um, Paul McCartney for a while, he came over and bought some stuff from us. And so the name kind of got out there because in those days, you have to remember, nobody was taking a Fender guitar and putting a humbucking pickup in it. Nobody was flattening the fingerboard and putting jumbo frets like we were. So we were like ahead of everybody. And I, I did it because I worked nightclubs for so long and realized that those Fender half-volt pickups didn't cut it. I wanted to get that sustained. So you put a Gibson pickup, humbucking's about a volt and a half, and give you that a lot of ring and sustain. So I learned, you know, to do those, and guys loved them. So I thought, you know, the next step, let's make bodies, and the next step was make necks. Mm. Hooked up with Dave Schechter, who's a real genius. He taught me a lot of things, and Dave and I made a hundred bodies 
in one weekend at his shop in Reseda. Uh, and that's how I learned how to make bodies.